Hello everyone, my name is The Clever Fool. Today I will be playing a custom campaign created by Filthy Delphia. This will be Three Kingdoms 2, The Red Cliffs. You can find this mod by opening up the game, going to the mod browser by clicking the gear in the top right and clicking mods, and then searching for Three Kingdoms. Of course, there is Three Kingdoms 1, Three Kingdoms 2, which we're playing today, and Three Kingdoms 3, which we'll play later on. Let's go ahead and get started. Red Cliffs. China is in turmoil. The once great Han, a dynasty stretching back centuries, has been consumed by corruption and wars between rival warlords. Amid this chaos, Cao Cao emerged from the battlefield at Guangdu as the strongest warlord of central China. With the compliant Emperor Xian in his clutches, he prepares to march south across the Yangtze River to subdue the last independent warlords of China and finally fulfill his grand ambition. But who will prevail? Southern China, 200 CE, the 11th year of the reign of the Emperor Xian. The Imperial Chancellor Cao Cao prepares to cross the Yangtze River to subdue th Southern China. As he readies his armies, various other factions compete for power. Who will prevail? View each faction before making a decision. Select your chosen faction's hero unit when you have decided. Okay, so we'll be playing as Tal Tal to keep in theme for this first episode. I will do all eight, um, all eight factions, so I won't read through all of them for now. Tal Tal, Imperial Chancellor. Tal Tal's ambition to unify Ch China remains unfulfilled as the southern warlords refuse to accept his authority. Tal Tal must gather his armies to cross the Yangtze and defeat his most powerful rivals. Tal Tal fuels simple peasant armies and the empire's elite cavalry. His Tuntian system of soldiers farming the land means his farms are more productive. Farming technology is researched, archers and infantry do not cost gold but lack Imperial Age upgrades. Unique technologies benefit cavalry and can train cataphracts at the castle. And for this first video in this series, I'll go ahead and read out all of our hints. We have a population limit of 200. The Chinese technology tree has been modified to reflect the Han period. We'll have access to different units and technologies depending on our choice of faction. Not all factions are equally advantaged, and some play very differently from the rest. We choose a warlord, Cao Cao, Liu Bei, or Sun Quan, or Xi Xie, for a traditional conquering campaign. Choose Liu Biao or Liu Zhang for defensive or even pacifist approach. Choose Meng Huo for a nomadic playstyle, and Yan Bai Hu for raiding. If you play as one of the primary warlords, Cao Cao, Liu Bei, or Sun Quan, search the map to find a two additional heroes loyal to that warlord. Your rivals must gather resources and trade just as you do. Attacking their economies will weaken them. Try to prevent the Han governors, Liu Biao, Shi Xie, and Liu Zhang from achieving their ambitions, or they will become powerful. Though you will not be defeated if your warlord falls, you should still try to keep him healthy. He becomes more powerful with every advancement in age. Our scouts report that the warlords have to defeat factions to win. Cao Cao, the Imperial Chancellor, begins with his farming technologies researched. Archers and infantry do not cost gold but lack Imperial Age upgrades. Unique technologies include stirrups and ferimba. Oh, that's pretty crazy. And our unique unit is the cataphract. Liu Bei, the people leader. Skirmishers, spearmen, and villagers are stronger. Guan Yu and Zhang Fei become stronger in battle. Our unique technologies are uh, feature archers, which include yeomen and rocketry. Wow. And our unique unit is the Chuko Noom. Sun Quan, the relentless attacker, begins with an army. Infantry is trained more quickly and benefits double from blacksmith upgrades. Hoo! Unit, our unique technologies here feature the infantry, which include chieftains and Dragina. 
and our unique unit is the flamethrower. The governors are trying to complete personal ambitions to win. The Opiao, the defensive lord, begins with wheelbarrow and handcart researched with stronger towers. His unique technologies feature defenses, which include Great Wall and Crenellations, and his unique unit is the Rattan Archer. Shu Xie, the Frontier Builder, his battle elephants have greater armor. His unique technologies feature the elephants, uh, Shatra and Double Crossbow. His unique elephant uh, units include the Battle Elephant as well as the Belissa Elephant. Liu Zhang, the Pacifist Lord, he has a limited military with stronger monks. His unique technologies um, okay. Festivals make resources last longer and improve Liu Zhang's health. Unique unit is an envoy, a special unit for exploration that cannot be attacked. Ooh, that's very interesting. I wonder how they implemented that. We have some non-Han leaders, which only appear if selected. Uh, Meng Huo, the nomadic leader, does not require houses and can pack and move the town center. Packing the town center will destroy all other buildings, cannot build farms or many buildings. His unique unit is also the battle elephant. And finally, Yan Baihu, the bandit. Limited economy, but provides resources from raiding. Defeat warlords to receive free technologies and can train Tarkins. A dragon ship is irreplaceable, not sure what that means, but trains Karambit warriors for free and his unique unit is the Tarkin. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with Tal Tal. Here's hoping that my game doesn't crash this time. So on my first recording, I made it through probably about defeated five out of the six enemies, um, and then my game decided to crash. So hopefully it doesn't do that this time. Let's get a couple fishing ships out here and explore the area. Okay, so we have really, really strong cavalry as Tao Tao, and uh, we can also raise peasant conscripts without paying them gold, which is pretty strong. We have crossbows that only cost wood, for example, which is quite powerful. To defeat Liu Bei by 210 CE. Uh, he is over here. And he actually starts off relatively weak, so we should be able to deal with him fairly reasonably. And there's some legendary heroes that are loyal to us. It's good to know. Let's get another fishing ship. Lots of enemy bandits around. Okay. 
We also get free farm upgrades. So honestly, this custom Sasa uh, civilization is really stacked. Like super, super stacked. I'd like to get two bit axe as soon as I can here. Let's get ourselves a blacksmith. And keep villagers turning out here. Okay, that's a little take about relics. Okay, a little bit distracted there, but fortunately we were able to fend off the initial attack. And we can start prepping for the counter attack now. Look, he's moonwalking. How cute.
何主命令？为行，建筑，建筑，建筑，建筑，建筑工。Let's build some additional housing here. And start thinking about getting to the next age. We do have two castle age buildings, or two field age buildings, so we can advance. Just need a way to get the resources in. Spearmen and skirmishers are going to be no match for our guys. Castle Age, that's fine. We'll be out to the Castle Age 2 now. As soon as we get to the Castle Age, I'm going to start sending cataphracts at blue. Making great progress here. What do you mean? What? 
Grab ourselves a university. Move forward. How much does this unique cost? Tech cost? Let's do it. Stirrups. It'll severely, severely boost our cavalry abilities. Nice, we received quite a lot of bonus food and gold from that. We can even probably use it to get to the Imperial Age. Yeah, I think I will try to use it to get to Imperial Age. Okay, cool. So our other enemies have some secondary objectives that we want to prevent from achieving. Uh, why can I get to Imperial here? Two castle age buildings. Does this not count as a castle? That seems like a bit of an oversight, if you ask me. There's a relic over here, good. Pick that up. I guess this castle just doesn't count as a castle age building. Okay, we should be good now. Let's keep our boom going. And keep producing cataphracts. Let's grab that relic. Try to scout out Sun Quan here. The house, that's no good. Oh, 
种命令，见主播。It's a really big map now that I think about it. Trade cog, not a demo ship, thankfully. What a meaning. Quang Gong, Jian Zhu Gong. Wait. All right, so it looks like teal and yellow have declared war on each other. Which honestly suits me just fine. What this suggests to me though is that I should try taking out both of them at the same time. Xiao Hou Dun, the one eyed who lost his left eye in battle against Wu, serves Tao Tao faithfully. Ooh, oh wow, this guy's strong. Build 
The gruff and practical Xiaohou Yuan will follow Cao Cao, for Cao Cao does not taste defeat. That's pretty good. There is a relic back here for us to grab. Let's go ahead and grab that. Wow, our first farms are just starting to run out. That's pretty impressive, actually. I'd like to get a second castle. So I wonder if we get free, uh, or rather no gold cost two-handed swordsman, that'd be pretty cool. Two out of four castles, as well as some wonders. A wonder. Man, holy crap. Oh, 
人嘛，遵命。好。得主命令。什么？建筑工。建筑工。什么？喂。好。猎人。何种命令？喂。正确。准备就绪。喂。遵命。伐木伐木工。The brightest candle burns the fastest. Such seems to be the destiny of the Sun family. Okay, so we've killed off Yellow. That's good, and now we can focus on efforts in this direction then. Only wish to be left alone in peace. Do not force the deaths of your people and mine. Oh, I have some bad news for you, man. I may conquer, so I gotta conquer, dude. Yeah, these militia only cost food. Oh, that's amazing. Cao Cao's army is super strong. That's a lot of enemy castles, though. Gray is close to doing his festivals. Two more relics. Let's try to snag those up. Thank you. 
We should go after Gray next. Oh, these guys can't get upgraded past Long Swordsman? That's a bit of a shame. That does damage their viability somewhat. Pop cap, which is excellent. See that Teal hasn't given up yet. He still has a TC here after all. Tiger knows when he is too old to hunt. I meet death with the honor and grace of a Han gentleman. That sounds familiar, familiar actually. Establish a forward base on this stone pile here. Okay, so purple fulfilled their ambition, which is unfortunate. I suppose there's not much I could have done about that. He's really far away. Barbarians have been defeated. Okay, cool. Not sure what where those guys came from, but I guess that works. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
建建筑，建筑工，建筑工。Okay, hopefully my game doesn't crash again. Battle offense don't look too much stronger than normal. Oh, that is a lot of enemies actually. about it that is a lot of HP Oh, my warlord died. Rip. Looks like the first wave is over. We lost a lot of our trebuchets. Well, that's okay. We managed to fend off teal, or rather purple. We should try to focus on killing off gray now before he gets a chance to fully recuperate. Oh, 
Getting into the trade line will be super important. Gotta destroy the enemy trade line too. Looks like gray and purple are just gonna ally against us, which is kind of unfortunate, I guess. That's where the market is. Good. I surrender in the hopes the swords and spears of China will be turned into plowshares, and we finally may have lasting peace. Okay, that's all well and good, but I don't want... I don't want purple to have an, a source of trade with you. Having purple be the strongest enemy is very annoying. His troops are quite strong, and they're very population efficient. Whereas our troops are not so population efficient. Okay. 
攻击。神矛，作战。什么？遵命，剑指。什么？准备就绪。神帽，遵命。准备就绪。神帽，请何主命令。准备就绪。好。神帽，请。遵命。好。好。何主命令。准备就绪。遵命。神帽，何主命令。Yeah, I'm just gathering all my military units in the south now. 何主准备就绪。神帽，何主命令。准备就绪。神帽。遵命。准备就绪。Now let's try scouting the purple base here. 喂，何主命令？什么放工？何主命令，请好。准备就绪，何主命令，神帽。准备就绪，神帽。准备就绪，何主神帽。请，何主命令，遵命，遵命。准备就神帽，请遵命。何主准备就绪，何主命令，请好，请遵命。准备就绪，攻击。神帽，何主命令命？好。神帽，停。遵命。准备就绪，准备就绪。为。好。建筑工，准备就绪。正确。行。什么正确？何主命令？好，准备就遵命。好，遵命。何主命令？作战。准备就遵命。好，神马。What I do like about this scenario is that there's tons of resources everywhere on the map, so I'm never really feeling like I'm in danger of running out of resources at least.
停好，准备就地。什么？停好，何种停？是。准备就地停好。什么？攻？何种停？作战。准备就地，攻击。什么？I do like also that this mission is not restricted in population limit like the other one is. The other one I believe has a cap of 100 which is not nearly as grand of a scale as this one is. Here I feel like I'm making use of all the abilities that were granted to me. Look at the Firm Belight Cavalry. 1 plus 9, 7 plus 9, that's actually crazy. I will say though that the factions don't seem to be using too many of the resources that are near them. Maybe it's the limitation of the AI. But it looks like we've defeated most of purple now as well. We should be giving up soon. Large parts of the map are actually unused still because the factions that we didn't select didn't spawn onto the map. Okay, just a couple more TCs left. There we 
we go. I have lived long life in service to the Emperor. I die fulfilled. Okay, so I've entered free play. We can now play to our heart's content. When we finish, we can declare victory at the town center. All right, well, in our case, since we needed to conquer everybody, I think we pretty much have already won. So I'm just gonna go ahead and declare victory right away. That was pretty fun, nice and straightforward. Cool. Your rise was challenging, but as your enemy soon found, inevitable. The Han court watches in pride as the Emperor Xian bestows the highest honors under the heavens upon you. But no one doubts reality. Though the Emperor sits upon the throne, you are the true power in China. After decades of conflict, China is finally at peace. Scenario by Ramzi Abdul Rahim. I think otherwise known as Filthy Delphia. Well, well created. Let's go check out the map. Okay, so the west side barbarians are... I see, so there's a bunch of barbarians in the west of the map, it looks like. And maybe they got cleared out by purple or something. I live here with a bunch of gold. Huh. And some bandit camps out on the islands as well. Alright, so despite the large size of the map, it definitely does seem like only about 50% of it is filled with civilization stuff. That's okay. Um, I don't mind having like the bandits outside hanging around. They become pretty much a non-factor. And we'll have to see how the different scenarios play out otherwise. In any case, my name's been The Clever Fool. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.